Hi love, I'm Lacey. And this is Lisa. And you're listening to a podcast, No Limits, where we talk with different interesting people about life, psychology, relationships, self-development and everything else that might help you on your life journey. Today's guest is Vasilis. Vasilis is a team lead in TransferWise and a really good friend of mine. Vasilis is incredibly smart and opens up about relationships and other topics in this episode. And today's episode is about relationships and we are going to discuss questions that you have sent us and that we have done research that are very interesting and juicy. And we're talking honestly about red flags, how to notice them. We're talking about turn-ons, turn-offs for a man. And one very interesting topic, oh, we're going to touch on masculine and feminine qualities in yes. relationship. Yeah. So enjoy the show. And thank you for being here. Hi, Vasilis. Hello. So good to have you here. Thank you for being, for inviting me. Thank you for coming. It's actually our first talk show uh, in this format, so you are our first guest. All right, excited to begin. <laughs> yeah, when we were talking who to invite and uh, you came into my mind pretty pretty fast. Mm -hmm. You're always so honest, open about stuff. It's been such a pleasure to be your friend. All right, that, that, that's really good to hear because I feel the same about you as well. Like it's uh, you, you've been like one of the first people I met here I think and it's just like it was always like our friendship was like natural like mm -hmm. since yeah from it really beginning was since now. Yeah. yeah how did you two meet we met in EBS yeah Mm. Yeah, that was like probably five years ago. Yeah, something oh, like that. Yeah, actually, it would be interesting to uh, tell your story. Mm -hmm. How did you come to Estonia? All right, so uh, it was 2017, I think. It was January, and um, I'm originally from Greece. For those who don't know, I'm Vasilis. Hello, <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, I was studying in Greece, and I wanted to do an exchange program at the end of my studies. And I was looking for somewhere to go. I wanted to go somewhere really far away from home to just experience something, something new, something different, something that I, I haven't seen before. And uh, while I was browsing through uh, the list of universities I would go, Estonia was the furthest place I can go. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know anything about the country. I was like, right, let's do it. Why not? Mm -hmm. Like, it's going to be a nice adventure. So I came here with no expectations, nothing. And um, yeah, the school was EBS, obviously. And I was, from the very first moment, I was like, yeah, this, this is looking very nice. <laughs> the school was good. The, the people, like a lot of nice people around there. Uh, the country was exactly what I wanted. Something, you know, Estonia and Greece, I think they have like a lot of differences. So getting another perspective was very interesting. So I was really happy to stay here for a long time. And, and I did. And mm -hmm. as you can tell, five years later, still yeah. here. <laughs> yeah, because you were supposed to come just for a half a year or... Yes, I was actually, it was supposed to be just one semester. Mm -hmm. And um, quickly enough, I was like, no way, I'm going to stay way longer. I, I knew it from the beginning. So I did everything I could to extend my staying here. I stayed the whole year. And then, uh, yeah, I finished... I, I didn't go back home at all. Like mm -hmm. uh, I was actually working for a little while <laughs> with Lisa Maria uh, at the same place mm -hmm. during the summer. And uh, then I finished my studies. Um, I just went back to Greece for like a couple of weeks, finished the studies and then came back straight away, started working here. Mm -hmm. and it's been an adventure since then. I remember when you arrived, but uh, you so quickly became friends with everyone and became so active in the EBS community and in student council as well. Like, how was it for you to switch countries and uh, make like the effort to meet everyone and become such a local that fast? I think it was it was very natural because I was. You know, that's what I was after. I was after an adventure, right? Mm -hmm. So the whole, my whole mode was like, right, this is what we do right now. Let, let's meet people. Let's just like socialize. Let's, uh, you know, get to know different cultures and just, you know, maximum. I knew it, I have limited time here. I thought. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I was like, we got to maximize everything. School, you know, groups, events, activities, all that. So I was, I was very much like full on energy and it just, it was like a very natural thing for me. 
Mm -hmm. That's amazing to hear that you actually, when you came here, you had like a specific goal in mind, like you were looking for adventure. Like, do you think this was helpful for you, like to adjust in a new culture? Yes, a hundred percent. Even though I would say culturally, Estonia is very different than, than Greece. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't mind because that's, I, as I said, that's what I was after too. And it wasn't only the Estonian culture I was exposed to. Like EBS had people from all over the world, right? So literally all the continents. And it was it was this massive cultural shock from ju not just Estonia, but like every country you can imagine, which was like very new to me, obviously, back then. And uh, it had it had a nice you know spice into it and it was just i was treating every single culture as new and estonia just was one of them mm -hmm. but have you always been very open to communicate with new people or uh, i think um growing up in greece yes i was i was very you know social all the time i knew i knew even back home i knew a lot of people and i was always like uh i would say nice person to hang around <laughs> in the parties and so on you still are <laughs> yeah <laughs> thank you <laughs> and uh, but not necessarily i wasn't exposed to that kind of environment so i couldn't even imagine this in my head right when you're young when you're in school you don't really think of that you just think what you are presented with mm -hmm. and just you know stepping out of the country was just this little spark that was ignited right and then kind of yeah. took over I, I think as you said it always depends on somebody's experiences, mm -hmm. right? Uh, not necessarily that people here are not open-minded. Like yeah. I've seen really amazing people here as well, but it always comes down to how you grew up, what have your friends and family been, you know, have you traveled when you were young? Have you been exposed to like different cultures, different, like, you know, a variety of things in your life? If you, if you kind of, I don't know, maybe, some people they haven't done all those things maybe they never had the even the idea of what it could look like right and then you but but then again like you suddenly expose somebody to these kind of things and then they just you know they are ignited and they're full on so maybe it's just they just don't know that they have this element yet yeah well it's so interesting to me to hear your experience because i've talked to a lot of friends and you know also having an EPS background, we were doing the exchange that studies abroad. And I've heard so many stories where people find it super hard to adjust. And these experiences of going abroad, they're like so mentally challenging. Mm -hmm. So I I'm like mesmerized to hear <laughs> your story. But I, I, like, that's why I think that you had a specific goal that you mm -hmm. were like going after adventure that probably this was very helpful. But what else would you say? Like what made you stay here like what was the mm. but well first of all yes obviously everybody is gonna have a vastly different experience right mm -hmm. so it could be that you know maybe you just end up in a really bad environment right some people maybe they just didn't found themselves where they went to right maybe the country was not too much of their liking maybe the school wasn't great so there's a lot of, of those elements I, I think i was lucky enough to have a variety of things that helps that but uh, what made me stay here was um well i was finishing school and um i was already i was i lived here for a year already so i i met a lot of people i kind of built my circle here i was involved with with a lot of projects here uh, like some startups and that kind of stuff and i was you know exploring this mega uh, you know society that estonia has about you know startups and tech and businesses and all that and that was really fascinating for me because back home you don't really you don't really have this environment greece is even though it's an amazing country to go for vacations uh, there's not much business and tech and like this kind of vibe for a, for a young fresh out of school like me like i was right mm -hmm. so you would have to struggle a lot and then you wouldn't get much in return whereas here it was a great place to kick start your career start learning a lot of things be involved in like cool projects and nice things around and it just it felt like a no-brainer honestly mm -hmm. a lot of opportunities just have to choose wisely yes exactly but you currently are working in uh, wise what's your story there <laughs> yes that was um i've been there for almost three years now and it's a it's one of those places here where if you are a foreigner, I think that's, you know, that's your to-go place, maybe Bolt as well and some other companies. 
but um, yeah, I I joined almost three years ago there, and I thought the company was pretty big back then. We were almost like 1,500 people, and now we've we've even doubled that. Like we are like 3,000 right now, which feels like a crazy environment to be. Mm -hmm. But um, but yeah, it was it was kind of like stepping into that company felt like you know you are even expanding yourself or even even more because it's such an international place we have like nationalities from like 80 different countries or 88 or, or so on so it's just even though you know we're located here it feels like you are everywhere mm -hmm. so that was great but what do you do there oh what do i do there um i am leading one uh, teams one team which is related to compliance uh, essentially all you need to know is that you know when you're dealing with financial you know fintechs and like financial institutions and stuff there's there's a lot of bad guys that wanna you know do harm uh, in your company and like exploit the systems and just you know there's fraudsters there's people who want to launder money and all that stuff mm -hmm. so my team is uh, investigating those guys make sure that uh, we're keeping wise and everyone else <laughs> safe. safe. Mm. Yeah. Sounds exciting. Yeah, it's it's been it's been a really nice journey, but I think the the coolest thing was to see the company grow and see the team grow and see everything grow. It's sort of like I like to make this analogy of uh, like a startup and a business and all that. It's sort of like a person. You know, you are mm. you are a toddler at the beginning, then you become mm -hmm. like adolescents and you all grow up and, and all that stuff. And it's the same with the company. Like you you kind of see those faces and those problems you're trying to solve. And over the years, it feels like, you know, every, you're maturing more and more and more and you try mm -hmm. to solve more complicated problems and so on. So it's it's amazing to see and a great experience. Yeah. And TransferWise has, sorry, Vice, <laughs> <laughs> has grown so much and is such a respectful company. And I think you as a very entrepreneur person and very open-minded person and active person, putting yourself in that environment makes a huge difference. And how do you feel um, like the switch between the university and the workplace? How did your relationship and your relationship with yourself and being here in Estonia did that affect or change um, a lot? Or? I think, yes. <laughs> if I look back, obviously, I've changed a lot as a person. And obviously, work has, has a lot to do with that. Uh, because, you know, it's it's your it's an environment you spend a lot of hours during your week. And uh, obviously, it's, it shapes you as a person, right? So I think um, coming out of university and stepping well, I didn't go straight to TransferWise. I was in another company before that. Uh, but, but talking about about Wise, um, it obviously the the greatest thing that has an impact in your character is the the type of people that you're working with. We have like really brilliant minds coming from you know big companies, and they are they are like way smarter than anyone else you know could imagine. And just like listening to those people mm -hmm. and kind of have to collaborate with them, it's just it's just a school on its own. And you can never replace this with any university and any <laughs> any book you're gonna study. Like just mm -hmm. having the real practice, it's just a, a whole different thing. And that that I would say obviously it grows you as a person. It saves your character, and essentially you become more mature because of that. And I can see that it has a great impact on my relationships as well, uh, in terms of um, you know the way I look at friendships and the way I look at you know uh, different communication styles with with my friends and like you know, my intimate relationships and so on. And a lot of, and obviously, you know, being mindful of, uh, you know, what, how you communicate with, with somebody else, right? And a lot of those things come from the workplace because there you learn that, you know, you have to deal with like hundreds of people and not everybody has your communication style, right? Mm -hmm. So you kind of need to, to understand who you're talking to and adjust your, your communication style appropriately. And you kind of like get this perspective of like, yeah, maybe sometimes I should be more mindful with some people. Like, just, don't just like go as a train, as a roller coaster, try to like balls into it. You can be more soft. You can be more, you know, pleasant mm -hmm. with other people. Be polite. Be honest. 
Oh my God, I love what you're saying. This is so true. And I, I admire this about you that you're so uh, aware of it. Like, uh, and I think it's a, it's a very nice characteristic or trait in you that if you work with those people that actually you're an observer and a learner as well, because you can just go to the meeting and just be there and be concerned about how you are and how you are going to perform. So it, it's really fascinating. <laughs> Thank you. It's I, I guess I mean there's obviously those times where sometimes you're just too focused on the short term and you your your uh, brain is a little bit foggy, but I think it's always good to reflect back mm -hmm. and kind of try to understand. You know, let's say you deal with a project; it's very stressful. Mistakes are gonna be done along the way, but like after after everything is done, just reflect. What could you do better? what went well, what didn't go so well, and you know, how could you influence things in a more positive way. And if you do that long enough, and if you do it time after time, then you reach to a point where, you know, it just becomes your autopilot mm -hmm. and you suddenly become good at it. And yeah. It But how come this came into your life, this reflecting tool? Who? that's a good question. I think it Yes, if I had to trace it back, I would say, you know, it's cliche by now, but I would say COVID was one of the things that, mm. you know, if I had to describe initial experience would be a massive re reflection period because it suddenly felt that all the distractions went away. I'm talking about early quarantine days, right? Mm -hmm. You're at home, you're just working from home, you know, you can't see anyone. It's just, you know, it's a lonely period, but it's a great period because, you know, as I said, all the distractions suddenly went away and you now focus on yourself and you realize what's important, what's not. And you realize, you know, oh, well, you start thinking, thinking about the past and maybe think about the future and so on. And you understand that, hey, wait a minute, like maybe I could have done better on X, Y, Z, or maybe this thing is not that important in my life anymore. I don't want to pursue it further. And instead I want to put more attention to that and be more, more mindful about, you know, different things. And that's just, that for me was massive growth. And yeah, honestly, you know, even though it's, it, it was a horrible time, I'm glad that I had to, I, I had this time for myself and learn from it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so COVID brought a lot of good things. That's what I believe. Yes. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people made some serious life changes during the mm -hmm. quarantine period where they actually had the time to sit with themselves and their, their emotions, their goals, what they want to achieve, what's their reality at the moment. But when you look back, what were some, some of the changes you made uh, from, the reflect, from the reflecting that you realized that you want to change in your life? I think it was, um, at that time it was, it was a point in my life where you suddenly, you're in your mid twenties, right? Where I was, uh, and you suddenly realize that, you know, you're now that's a point where 30 becomes very close to you and like 20 starts to get further away from <laughs> you. And that was, for me, it was like a moment to like, oh, wait a minute, like, that's, that feels a bit weird. <laughs> mm -hmm. And it was a moment for me to realize that, all right, so who are we now? Like, what are we doing in life? And, you know, are you, are you still more like, you know, just, I don't know, a, a guy just, uh, you know, trying to have adventures and have fun and all this stuff, or should you be planning more for life and you know, what comes next and all that stuff? The answer I figured out is like, you don't have to be something specific. You can be obviously, you know, depending on your life, you can be whatever you want, but it's those new elements that are being introduced into your life that you never thought about before. And obviously, you know, um, family, you know, having a house, uh, like building your future and all the stuff slowly come into your ha your brain. Whereas before they never were there. It was more like, you know, let's just finish school. Let's just like take this cool project. Let's travel around the world. Let's do this and that. And now it's like, there's a whole new variety of things that are coming into your life, which is great. Mm -hmm. It's uh, what I understand is like you've started to focus on more of the long term goals rather than the short term ones. Yeah, absolutely. you really described also like a conscious living. Absolutely. I think, yeah, essentially what matters in life, right? 
have some friends around you who you support and they support you back as well uh, maybe have some intimate relationship uh, you know have a career that you can build with uh, you know obviously as I said adventures are always going to be yeah. there <laughs> but just be mindful right like you mm-hmm. you don't just you know go and break things you you're a bit more mindful nowadays and uh, and yeah all, all sorts of those kind of things <laughs> but how do you see yourself do you see yourself now staying in estonia or moving back to greece or perhaps <laughs> somewhere else <laughs> that's a tough question <laughs> i always get asked um to be honest i don't know uh, i don't think i will go back to to greece anytime soon i don't think there's anything for me at the moment maybe when i retire or i don't know enjoy the greek islands and so on uh, i think for now estonia seems like a very reasonable choice I'm really happy with my job here, really happy with my friends and all the things that I, I do around here. But you never know, maybe there's a, suddenly there's a new opportunity in some other country and you would just want to explore uh, further. Mm-hmm. But for now you're happy here. For now, no change is planned. <laughs> <laughs> happy to have you here. Yeah, happy to be here with you guys, <laughs> for sure. But uh, you have something to ask more? If you- before we're gonna switch to the spicy questions part. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm good. Yeah. I think yeah, we covered pretty much. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Enough about Vasilis, yeah. let's talk about some good stuff. We could talk oh, about yeah. you for hours. It's yeah, so interesting to hear. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, in today's show, as usual, but not as usual right now, this is our mm-hmm. first show, but yes. <laughs> what can you expect from this show? Is that we have uh, questions from uh, our followers and from me and Lacey as well, that we want to talk about and ask from you about relationships. Uh-huh. It's a little research also that we have made that mm. what are the questions that people are interested in asking and maybe not always have the courage to ask. Yeah, straight forward to the shoot ahead. We are bringing them up, up here. <laughs> Always open. So the first question is, um, what do you value the most in a relationship? Ooh, <laughs> I think again a bit of a cliche answer, but I would say open communication. And nowadays, that's even more important with how you know everything is so evolving so fast and so on, and it's often often over, often overlooked. Having a good communication with your partner is key about everything, whether it's, you know, I don't know, like your day to day stuff or, you know, where your lives are heading in the long run or just like simple things. It's just you you need to have those conversations with them. Right. And if you if you don't, then there's those cracks that are happening in your relationship. And suddenly, you know, you might start start holding things back and she might do the same. And, you know, you're kind of like everything builds up a little bit and, and a, little bit, a little bit more and then suddenly everything just becomes too much for everyone and suddenly you see like one day one of the persons just burst out and you're like wow where did that came from mm. and yeah no wonder <laughs> if, mm-hmm. if those things are happening all the day so yeah you really need to talk about stuff with your partner openly and honestly uh, I think it, it's really important to see it uh, it goes both ways you need to be uh open about communicate communicating but you also need to understand when to push out the questions from your partner and really notice that maybe your partner has an issue and ask like hey what's up is something wrong with you can i help you somehow uh speak speak what are you feeling what are your feelings exactly yeah you need to understand the little clues you know your partner is giving you right because people might not be very comfortable with talking about certain things all the time right but just if both of you are aware of like if something is wrong don't let it slide like oh you know it's just a bad day or something just you know talk about it it's it's it, when you talk about things it always gets better and yeah at the same time the it doesn't mean that you you have to criticize each other, right? You're trying to help each other. You're a team. You're not just enemies. Um, yeah, being able to to give feedback and also receive feedback and mm-hmm. do that consciously, I think that's a big thing. And not everybody not everybody can do it because you know sometimes we put our egos too much and we don't want to accept certain things. But uh, you know, you sometimes you have to suck it up and you know move forward mm-hmm. oh my god it warms my heart so much like it's crazy i feel like shivering all over my body I, i'm so glad to hear a man say that 
because typically it's it's more easy for women to speak openly and I'm I'm so glad to see that men are like slowly slowly getting <laughs> there as well and I'm so glad that you are here so openly and honestly talking about it but do, do you feel uh is there a difference for you I, I don't there's one question I wanted to ask that we didn't ask before uh are you currently in a relationship I am not okay but uh, do you feel there's somehow different like according to the cultures to talk here with women or or is it do do you think you're open because of your culture more do you think there is a difference or there's not really yeah i think um culture does play a role i think in relationships uh not yeah but it doesn't necessarily have to come from the culture it's how you grew up right Mm -hmm. so let's let's not blame any nationality or anything i don't think that's the issue it's about what you got used to it as a you know uh, from your childhood from your friends from your family and all that Mm -hmm. if you were taught that you know it's okay to talk about your feelings it's okay to talk about things and you know you are you're allowed to be feeling a certain way and you're allowed to to be happy and be angry and be sad and being you know cheerful and it's all good like there's no problem about it i think it comes easier for you to become a better communicator and you're more open about things whereas if Maybe somebody who was, you know, usually comes from the childhood. If you were kind of being taught to suppress those emotions, kind of, you know, when you're happy, people will be like, why are you so happy? Mm-hmm. When you're sad, people will be like, don't be sad. Everything is okay. You know, like it's those little patterns that you learn from a young age and you suddenly at some point, maybe you feel that you're not allowed to feel anything. And that's very hard for people to start talking about their feelings and mm-hmm. communicate to others as well To because you don't feel safe, right? Mm-hmm. And it's just essentially you do it because you're afraid. Yeah, and then talking about your, your emotions becomes super personal as, as well. Like you mentioned before, it's so important to give feedback and it's also so important to receive feedback and receive it in a way that you don't take it personally, but it, you take it as feedback and uh, a place from where to grow as a person. Exactly. And I think that's that should be the goal for both parties inside the relationship that you know the goal is to grow together and individually Mm -hmm. as well and you need to as i said you're a team you don't like nobody should have a a reason to harm one another right you both want to pinpoint those little flaws in each one of your characters and kind of you know get over them and overcome them and improve them right Mm -hmm. and it should be received as, as that because sometimes you know maybe maybe somebody makes a comment about you and you kind of take it personally and you kind of like go in defense mode and Mm -hmm. that's like you have to go over that and kind of see what other people are telling you Mm -hmm. for what it is obviously sometimes people are just going to say mean things to you because you know they're just not very nice people but uh, you need to also be mindful to filter those but i wanted to ask is your childhood home did you grow up talking about emotions like is this your experience how you grew up that you're so open about them Mm, i don't i think i had a pretty stable childhood i don't think i my parents are together uh, there hasn't been any major issues in the house everything is like pretty normal i would say Mm -hmm. um i don't think obviously there's certain instances where you know inevitably you're being taught to suppress some, some emotions right like it's it doesn't because think about it like 20 years ago people were not that open with anything right mm-hmm. they and that's like even modern days now nowadays right so pretty sure it wasn't uh, uh, growing up as a kid from your friends as well from your society and all that stuff it wasn't the most open place to grow up to um but i don't think it was suppressive in a mm-hmm. sense it just for me i would say i understood those things growing up later and reflecting as well oh that's interesting so you think reflecting has made the change for you is there something else like that you started working or or some self-development that helped you to be more open about it for sure uh i think well personal development for me it's it's a constant progress <laughs> since like school until until now and it's never gonna stop because you know we are we are changing all the time like every year you're a new person you look the same but you there's something else that was added to your character and if you're open 
it all comes down to being open to those changes and be willing to change and introduce those things as good things and not just shove them away and say hey this is not me like i'm not i'm not going to behave that way or i'm not going to do that like well it might not have been you until now but it could be a part of you moving forward and if you start saying things that way then change is the only way mm mm-hmm. Well, coming back to the question, you said that this open question, uh, open communication is one of the most important things you value in a relationship. I wanted to ask, do you think there is something that you should not talk about? Hmm. I think if there is something you should not talk about, Mm -hmm. then it probably means one of the two is not comfortable with talking about a certain subject which then means there's an underlying reason for this. Maybe it's a trauma, maybe it's a, I don't know, like really bad experience you had in the past or or something. Uh, It just essentially you're raising a wall behind that topic and say, we don't touch that thing, which obviously it's respectable right some people have really had a really rough time for certain things right and you should be able to respect that and don't push them beyond of what they can afford however if you're one of those people who has those walls behind a certain topic then i would dare you to to do some work and kind of try to figure out Obviously, it's not, it cannot be easy sometimes sometimes it's really hard it's the hardest thing you ever have to overcome in your life mm-hmm. But at least try. And if you if you can try yourself, seek for help, right? There's excellent people out there you can talk. You can talk to family, friends, your partner even, or professionals. There's no shame about it. But but yeah. And then if you do overcome this wall and if you kind of like slowly try to tear it apart, then you will be able to see further and then I think that's more beautiful. Yeah. I totally agree with you. And if you're not ready to speak about it, start writing about it. Journaling as well is such a powerful tool to start understanding your emotions and what you're going through. Mega. Journaling uh, journaling is huge. Like I've done it for mm, last three, four years. Uh, Not every day. I'm not like, oh, I have to wake up 9 a.m. do my (laughs) journaling. You know, like sometimes I might skip it. But like through the hardest time, it's the best psychology you can get because it's like it's sort of like you're talking to somebody and then you're putting all those cloudy thoughts in a piece of paper and it just feels like "Ah, now it's like at least i can see it like that's it it's not that scary anymore right so because sometimes we're just like having these thoughts all over our heads and we're just like making the thing out of you know something that shouldn't be that big but then you actually put it on paper you read it again you're like wait a minute i thought it wasn't it was I think it's not that bad anymore. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So yeah, do journaling. Highly recommend it. For good and bad things. All included. However you feel. Well, I'm very glad to hear that uh, you think that... Uh, that's what I got out from your answer anyways, is that you think that between the intimate relationship there should, should be total transparency. You should talk, be able to talk about anything. Absolutely. And if again, if there isn't something, if there is something you shouldn't, that you don't one of them doesn't want to touch it be mindful to respect those boundaries right Mm -hmm. but then again let's make the work together or or individually to to overcome that Mm -hmm. because you want to be again i feel like as a person you should be open to anything in this world why would you exclude something right obviously you know don't overdo things right don't don't you know uh, go aggressive into something or don't uh, don't abuse things, mm-hmm. but be open to things that you don't know and you're not aware of. You might discover something, something that's worth discovering. Beautiful. <laughs> really beautiful. From here, I'm going to uh, ask another question that came in. What do you think are some red flags people miss to see? Who red flag. <laughs> I think a huge 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 red flag that you should be able to spot from the beginning and if you do run away (laughs) (laughs) is people lying and people being dishonest Mm -hmm. and it doesn't necessarily need to be for huge things Uh, it can be for small things it can be for anything you know we all we've all lied whether it's 
a small little lie that you say when you're a kid or a huge lie that changes your whole life, right? And we all lie for different reasons. Nobody, everybody has a really good reason why they're lying. And if you ask them, that reason in their head makes total sense. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing to blame about that. But essentially what it is, is when somebody is lying, they're trying to protect themselves from si from something, whether it's, you know, trying to keep their ego very high or try to hide something or try to kind of like suppress something or it's coming from a place of, let's say it's a, it's a character flaw, right? Mm -hmm. And they're doing it in a way that, you know, for their character, it makes total sense. However, you have to ask yourself, do you want to be with that person? Do you want to be with somebody who is is introducing to you a reality that is out of this world? It, it doesn't exist anywhere. It just it's a fantasy. It's like a fake thing. Because when you realize that, you kind of you you feel a bit stupid, don't you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's it's not the nicest thing being lied to. And if they you know they might start with telling you like small lies at the beginning and then suddenly you realize something like a bigger lie I mean, you might overlook some things because you're like eh, i still love them i'm still like you know they're still a nice person it's just like a little thing that they are it's like their color character flow but maybe at one point you realize that you know they've been lying about many things and suddenly they are not really the person you thought they are so if you say those things straight from the beginning, don't hesitate to to move on. It's really easy to start making excuses to these type of people and uh, start to feel like you are the fault of them lying and them cheating or whatever they're trying to hide. In a sense, yeah, that, that is true because you feel, as you said, sometimes you feel the victim and sometimes they might even convince you that the problem is with you and you might actually believe it if they're good enough at manipulating you right mm -hmm. and people are gonna do that chances are you know our ego tends to get very high sometimes and w people will do everything they can to protect it and everything they can to to kind of you know keep it on the level they feel that it should be right and that's how that's why they create all those stories and if you try to if you try let's say to expose that they will get into defense mode and they will start attacking you and kind of like projecting all those things to you and trying to make you feel like you know you have the problem and not them because you know you don't want to lower your ego right so so yeah that's that's not a great place to be. <laughs> mm -hmm. I can totally relate because I have been in this situation myself, actually. And uh, I think it's super hard uh, to step out of it because like that's why I admire what you said in the beginning. I think it's important like the first if you spot it first, like quite in the beginning, it's very good to be aware of it because it only gets worse. Yes. Honestly, it only gets worse. Absolutely. And, uh, yeah, and at the end, like what I found about my experience is like, I develop very deep feelings for the, that person. And then of course, I want to understand them. I want to like, you know, make excuses for the lies. And I do understand like that's even I don't know if it's a plus or minus about being an empathetic person, but you do understand them. You, you they, Like you said, everybody has a reason for the lying. But it's true. The, the sooner you can spot it and make the choice for yourself, mm -hmm. the better it is. Yes. But you see, you you need to get burned once. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you need to go through this process to understand what's that people are more... Uh, malicious than this they seem right and mm. sometimes they're more evil than, than you think they are and you know once you once you go through that then you are able to spot the red flag but mm -hmm. i'm really hoping that this show is going to prevent some of that though yes <laughs> <That's awesome. laughs> i really hope to make a difference or at least if someone hearing right now is experiencing something like this or having questions or doubts please turn to me so we can talk about it <laughs> yes <laughs> because i would really like to avoid a lot of people getting into this experience and this you have the experience so you you probably can know exactly who what mm -hmm. they're going through, right? Mm -hmm. And this also applies to friendships as well, to notice oh, yeah. it in friendships. I haven't uh, experienced uh, this kind of lying in a relationship, but I've experienced it twice in uh, in friendships. And that is also 
something that really messes up your mind about the person mm -hmm. because you're not that close you are close but you're not like a partner level close and you suddenly don't even realize you're meeting a new person every time and but at one point even they can't keep up with their lies and soon they're gonna break yes and that's the key thing it's like you can't keep a lie alive forever mm -hmm. like at some point there's those cracks that are being introduced to the stories and everybody understands them right mm -hmm. but but yeah dealing with friends who are lying it's also a huge thing and essentially it's like you you get so confused because you it's like you know we see this glass everybody agree, agrees it's a glass right like there's no question about it but like somebody can be really good at describing that thing and make it seem that this is not a glass mm -hmm. and then suddenly your whole reality about this thing has collapsed because mm -hmm. this person was just so good at exposing falsely exposing that this is not a glass but but you see it is a glass no it's not well now i'm confused right <laughs> yeah Th that's super important point like you you both kind of touched upon it but i think what i would like to add here is that that's what happens like at some point if you're too long in those kind of dynamics in relationships your brain starts to mess with you mm. it's like you can't uh, understand anymore like what's happening and and also if it's intimate relationship then there's so much anxiety around it because you clearly understand that there's something phony about this situation, you know there's been lies, and then you start like feeling this anxiety that there's always those, like you don't know anymore, like is it the truth, is it the lie? And at the end you can just go crazy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like that. that's that's why I, I would really like to emphasize the importance of it because like I don't want anyone to go through this. And it, it is really, it can affect you so much bigger than you initially think. True, true, 100%. So again, if you spot those things, it's easier to get out at the beginning mm -hmm. because as, as soon as you start spending more time with that person, it only gets harder. Mm -hmm. So yeah, find somebody who respects you. <laughs> Are there any other red flags that you would bring out? Uh, well, that would be the major one, um, mm -hmm. but then, the other one would be something related to uh, not not being able to understand each other right like n not being able to to ignite this kind of like love spark between each other because every everybody has a different love language right and if you if you can't really understand what's your person then it just it doesn't get across and then there's no there's no love inside the relationship mm -hmm. so try to find somebody who you can comfortably speak to about everything kind of touch all the topics that you you feel are important then understand his needs her needs and vice versa and yeah comes down to communication again right mm. thank you for sharing <laughs> that so let's move to on to another question very interesting one what are some major turn-ons Ooh, turn-ons. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it can be so many for for everybody's got different turn-ons. Yes. But uh, obviously, there's a lot of physical things that can be a turn-on. Like you know, we are animals at the end of the day, and we're we everybody's got their own little idea in their head of what is sexy inside a man or a woman, uh, or whatever. Um, and I think you know a lot of those things again maybe come from your childhood as well, uh, which is very weird, but but that's where they're coming from, right? But if I had to, uh, personally, one of the biggest turn, that's just the fir okay, talking about the physical things, this is just the, you know, opening the door type of thing. It's like, that's the first introduction. It's like, you see somebody, you're attracted to them, they're attracted to you, right, let's get to know that person. Mm -hmm. But as soon as, you know, as soon as you start getting to know then that, that kind of is already established that there's a physical attraction and now you have to communicate with each other right so if there's no um if there's no you know kind of like brain waves interacting with each other then you know you could both be the most sexy people on the planet it's you're not gonna have a good time yeah. <laughs> for me one of the biggest turn-ons is uh when 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 the woman is articulate when she can like you know hold herself up with words when she uh, when she has like this certain intelligence that you know she doesn't necessarily need to be a brainiac or super smart on certain topic but like you know have 
nice manners in her speech like the way she, she treats people the way she interacts to to you and like other people and it comes with a certain level of elegance and i think that's very sexy not like you know you see some people are just maybe they're swearing too much or maybe they're just um you know being very lazy with their speech mm-hmm. i think that's uh, for me that's a bit of a turn off mm. Yeah, the next question was going to be, what are the biggest uh, turnoffs? There you have it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There you have it. Yeah, that, that's, I mean, it's very connected to to the previous answer, but uh, but yeah, when when you, it's like you, you hear different types of people talking and then, you know, you, there's obviously this type of people who kind of understand where where they are inside the place and how they should behave and what's appropriate and what's no kind of like what's the etiquette of everywhere you go let's say you go to the dinner you go to the countryside you go to speak with the president and so on and they're able to adapt so much i think that's that's a very nice skill to have as mm-hmm. communication skills and there's also like other people who are just maybe you know somebody could call them more authentic they're just like one thing and kind of maybe more bland and more direct and more that that's also great but like have some manners you know like be nice to each other mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but uh let's come back a little bit uh you said turn ons like physically speaking that's where, where you started is there something particular that you like for Ooh, you <laughs> so many things <laughs> <laughs> the, the woman body is just a, like a piece of art from nature so there's so many things to like i think for me one of the biggest things uh if i'm talking about physical attraction would be the things that i I can feel myself right like the way somebody kisses me the like how the lips feel and like you know how um like how you can interact with that person what are those you know the way they touch you and all all that Mm -hmm. stuff right like senses like stuff with senses so I would say for me, you know, having like really expressive lips is one of the biggest things. And then one other thing that I, I really look, it's it's the eyes, I would say. Mm-hmm. Like if we're talking about, you know, ex- facial expressions, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that's like with those two, you can say so much without saying anything. Like mm-hmm. the way somebody looks at you, the way somebody, you know, you know, You know, even even talking to each other, we are always like our face is doing millions of different expressions, and like the eyes and the lips are the two most important things. That you know, if you're happy, you're starting to smile. If you're sad, your lips are gonna go this way. Your eyes are gonna start doing like you know different things. Mm-hmm. And I feel like looking at those and looking how expressive expressive somebody can be with just those simple things. It's a it's a huge turn on mm. because some people can be very good at expressing themselves that way. Mm. And if you felt it, I think you know what I mean. If you <laughs> <laughs> if you haven't, then maybe you need to look at it. But <laughs> but just the way somebody is gonna look at you can make your body just shiver. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. Just I think that it, we're personal at, at the same time because they're only looking at you. Yes, exactly. Essentially, what it is is like you know your your eyes are showing the direction you want to head in this world world right and when somebody is putting the attention on you and they make sure you understand that it it almost feels like their whole purpose of right now is just you know focused on you mm. and i think that's very that's very sexy thank you for that <laughs> yeah. answer it's beautiful yeah so it's a big boring like oh you know it's just no, the no, face no, and the you know no not at all say, yeah. yeah i love that but are there any other turnoffs for you i like i understand for you it's this communication style or how yeah. woman is managing her communication in different situations is there any other turnoffs mm-hmm. again we are animals and uh we have you know certain senses and needs i think one of the biggest one is i'm i'm very big on smells like mm. you know uh like immediately when i go into the room i can like pick up how the room smells like or, f- or when you hug somebody you can immediately like smell what's their perfume or what's their natural sense and all that stuff and yeah sometimes you just it's sometimes you just meet somebody 
and the way they smell is not attractive mm. to you. <laughs> <laughs> not that they s- they're sweaty or something. It's just mm. everybody has a different, unique sense of smell, right? Mm. And yeah, it just some people just don't match with you, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so yeah, just be clean. Be <laughs> take a shower before you go on a date, you know. Like that's for guys as well, you know. Some guys are so, you know, they're going into the extreme of being animals, like. Mm they don't shower or they don't pay attention to how they look like on the day they wear like whatever clothes or like their hands are dirty and all this stuff like pay attention to those little things you know women are really good at picking those things up <laughs> so do some effort <laughs> it's like you mentioned before about the manners if you take care of other people take care of yourself too there you go exactly that's where it comes from right it's just if you if you can't take care of yourself I think that kind of manifests to the world that you're not capable of taking care of somebody else. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't treat yourself nicely, then how are you supposed to treat somebody else nicely? So that's a little clue for you to understand what kind of person you're dealing with. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily that it's true. Everybody values different, but that's a small indication sometimes. Yeah, and we're not talking about having nice clothes or superficial stuff like that. No. Just some basic stuff. Exactly. Just obviously you don't not everybody's into fashion not everybody has to buy expensive clothes and honestly you don't nowadays you don't even need to buy expensive clothes mm-hmm. to look stylish right you can go to thrift shops and whatnot and just look awesome without with very little money but i am an expert on that <laughs> <laughs> looking good in a very cheap way <laughs> there you go we're gonna have a conversation about that later <laughs> i'm very interested um but um yeah just look presentable so that you put some effort so that you that you actually you know care don't go with like messy hair and all that stuff and just like i don't know nails Mm. huge nails for guys and dirty hands and all that stuff just yeah just be nice (laughs) okay let's move on to another question what is your opinion is it true that men can't be just friends with women (laughs) well I think a lot of times it leads to to this evolving into a sexual attraction as well, but it doesn't necessarily have to. I think I, I have a lot of uh, female friends and we get along really well. There has never been an element of like, you know, sexual element. Mm-hmm. So I think you can be, but uh, but obviously since you are both, you know, since you're having a, a relationship with with a gender that you're attracted to uh then you have high chances of actually developing feelings with them at some point if you're spending too much time together mm-hmm. let's say you live together maybe you hang out all the, in the same group all the time maybe you're just you know you're exposed to each other so much and since you're friends you probably have a lot of things in common right mm-hmm. so that can lead towards uh, sexual attraction as well it doesn't necessarily have to but uh, maybe you're just risking your chances are <laughs> it could it could but yeah i don't think it's it's something that you should judge before entering a friendship with somebody oh like you know i'm a woman and she's a, he's a man we're not going to be friends because we might get too close like mm-hmm. just go with the flow <laughs> and if it does beautiful why not mm-hmm. wouldn't you want your best friend to be your husband one day mm-hmm. maybe maybe some people know but maybe some people yeah who knows <laughs> But currently, you mentioned there are friendships in your life with women. Yeah, obviously. So you think it's possible to to to, to be just friends? Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Yeah. But I think one of them, maybe the question came from a person being in a relationship because I think that's the most complicated Ooh. and uh, uh, judgmental and uh, more like emotional part of being in a relationship and having. Uh, a guy, f- guy friends or uh, women friends. How do you feel about that? Mm. Where does the line go there? So somebody is in a relationship with a man or a woman, and then they have opposite gender mm-hmm. friends. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. That's that's tricky. I think personally, I think there's nothing wrong with that. You know. Again, if you're open with each other, there shouldn't be any issues. Uh, but then I guess it comes down to one of them being jealous, right? Mm-hmm. I think, again, coming back um, to the egos and all that, 
if you are if you suddenly start becoming jealous about your partner having relationships with opposite genders i think you're a little bit uh, that comes from a place of insecurity within yourself if you don't feel good about yourself and you feel like you know there's something off then you start projecting those things to your partner the problem is not that your partner is having rela- friendships with opposite genders right the problem is you not being okay with it it probably means that you feel talking with guys for example a lot of guys will get jealous and they will start like controlling the women and be like no you can't go out today or you can't do you can't hang out with this guy because he's a predator or whatnot like and like you once you get into that point you already lost the game because what you're essentially telling to your woman is that i think that i'm not good enough for you and you hanging out with other dudes you might find somebody who's better than me and i might lose you and as soon as you communicate that to your to your woman you've already lost here man <laughs> you have because you are putting yourself in that situation and there's probably something up with you that you need to work on and if you don't maybe you don't deserve that woman <laughs> Well, I believe here is super important also honesty because like I I have a lot of guy friends and uh, mostly it has not been a problem in my life with with in my intimate relationships because I'm very honest about it. I'm not hiding anything. I bring my guy friends into our relationship in a way that we hang all together. We go out together. There's no secret about it. Like I think it's not only that someone can be insecure about it. it it's also my responsibility when i have the friendships to be open about it and to make my partner feel comfortable about it True. because if i would just go out and not like i don't know have some secrets or lie about it i think that that's sketchy mm-hmm. <laughs> there's something wrong there that's yeah. when, when you can't be just okay do whatever like because I then you're would. triggering the partner to feel that way yeah. even if the man might actually feel that he's up to the woman mm-hmm. and, and lives up to the relationship but if the woman or or man it doesn't matter uh, acts that way then you're triggering out of this this side of your partner true true totally true you need to again you need to be able to communicate to your partner that hey this is nothing right then you, you don't try to like challenge each other you mm-hmm. don't try to push the limits right mm-hmm. because then you know you might find the limits at some point mm-hmm. uh but yeah again vice versa it goes for both men and women they should be open about those things and mm-hmm. if they are up to something sketchy maybe that's also something you need to communicate right oh hey you know i've been hanging out with this person and i i don't know something is wrong inside me right talk like if you have an open communication with your partner you will be able to safely talk about this Mm -hmm. and understand what it is and i mean people don't have also sometimes it comes to the point where you don't you lose attraction with your partner at some point and there's no no thing further with with you two and you move on to somebody else right and it's okay but you just you don't try to hide it Mm -hmm. you don't try to lie to the other person and make them feel bad something you need to communicate again Mm -hmm. Ooh, a spicy one is how do men feel about successful women (laughs) i like that one um well obviously we can generalize here uh but i think if we had to divide two like different opposite sides, I would say there's probably one side that, you know, feel that obviously, you know, as a man can be successful, obviously a woman can also be successful, especially nowadays, right? That, you know, uh, the the world is much more open and, you know, there's so much many opportunities for everybody. And I think that also, as I said before, that also can be very sexy for some people as well, having a successful woman next to you who is as successful as you or even more right it can it can add an element of of a very unique attraction because you feel like you're somebody very valuable next to you and you appreciate that right and it's the same thing like vice versa as well but also on the other hand it could be that just because somebody is very successful it can make the partner very insecure because maybe they're not that successful themselves and they feel like again the ego comes up and it's like why get to be why get can you get to be so much more cooler than i am right like i'm gonna i'm gonna diminish you and i'm gonna start putting you down a little bit i want to bring you to my level right that's not healthy at all that's very toxic and 
if you're a successful woman with somebody like this maybe you shouldn't <laughs> you shouldn't be with that person you want to be with somebody who is uplifting you elevating you and at the end of the day you're both equals inside their relationship and you you work as a team you try to make things better no matter how successful you both are you want to become more since you're exposed to it i mean you're in a relationship you're exposed to each other a lot and uh, that can also you know you often might overlook some of the things or might not even realize it and you know you kind of end up influencing each other and if somebody's doing that maybe you influence each other in a bad way um yeah there's not really a solution you just need there's something you need to be aware of and you need to be mindful and if somebody's doing that call them out and say hey why are you doing this what are you trying to achieve mm -hmm. and maybe you can change some things yeah what we were talking about was setting boundaries and being clear and bringing that up to your partner that hey i realize what you're doing and this is not working for me you can't express your insecurities in that way we can deal with these insecurities but you can't bring me down exactly and that's the that i think that's very healthy of putting it out there to kind of you know communicate to the person that hey this is these are my limits don't do that if you do that we're gonna have a problem and mm -hmm. if the person continues to behave in a way that it's not okay with you and you know obviously you try to work it through and you try to make things you know you try to work things out but maybe you come to a point where you realize that uh, you just don't match anymore and this is something this person will always do so so then again you can move on just gotta stand up for yourself you have to yes whether you're again whether you're a man or a woman or whatever it doesn't it doesn't matter like you inside the relationship you should treat each other as equals and and if you don't if the dynamics are are a little bit sketchy then there's probably some cracks that you need to to understand and as i said the only way to find your limits is to to kind of push them again you need to we always learn with, from the bad experiences mm -hmm. right nobody learns from the good stuff so you need to I, I think you need to have as many bad experiences as you can early on <laughs> <laughs> and not, not, not something traumatizing for life but like allow yourself to experience different people and experience different personality whether mm -hmm. that's friendships uh, intimate relationships or sexual partners or whatnot allow yourself to be exposed to different types of people because then you will be able to understand what type of people are out there in the world and you will be you will be more mindful and more careful stepping into your next relationships whether it's friends or an intimate one and essentially you will know yourself you will know where are your limits and you will also know what you're looking for. Mm -hmm. It's very mature to see your mistakes as a growth opportunity rather than seeing that as a, a negative thing. Yeah, a lot of people, especially younger people, fail to do that. Though. They, they are they're like, oh, you know, this is who I am and it's it's the other person's fault and it's uh, I was perfect. Uh, he was he was being bad or she was being bad and, and whatnot again. Ask yourself, where is that coming from? Maybe you're trying to protect your ego and you're trying to like keep yourself like, oh, I was I was the good one here, but maybe you weren't. But there's always something that can be improved by both sides. Mm -hmm. But how would you feel in, in your life? I don't know what experience you have, but you can speak from now. Like if you are dating extremely successful women, woman, let's say professionally she would be i don't know on in a better position or earn more money have a bigger home whatever like how would you feel uh well i've been in that situation um and for me it was like it was always like you know whatever you do i'm here I'm, i support you like i'm here behind you cheering for you you know you're doing great and it was for me i think it's it's a it's a cool thing right like you can be proud about your partner you can you know talk about them with your friends and with your family and whatever and genuinely be proud that you are able to be with a person who are doing all these incredible stuff mm -hmm. so i think it's great because essentially you know you grow from that as well like with having somebody very successful next to you mm -hmm. it's a, i think it's a very beautiful thing it's not a competition yes you're a team you're not uh, you're a team together <laughs> you're not a team against each other mm -hmm. but uh, sometimes people forget that yeah. but from uh, i understand now that you have even had the experience which is awesome so i can ask 
even juicier question <laughs> <laughs> it's like um, no because you're speaking from the experience it's always different than speaking about theory right um, but what would you say th- during this period of your relationship there was no times when you were feeling insecure uh, yes they were absolutely but but then that was for me well, well at that time you you don't really understand that well like what you're feeling or mm. what are the flaws that you might projecting might be projecting as well to the other person or what are the mistakes that you do but then give it time try to reflect back and then you see all those things and then you're like eh, there's a few things i could have done better as well right mm. to to make this work but yeah it ends up happening again it you need to you need to understand when this is happening it doesn't necessarily need to be from your relationship it can be with with any anybody who you interact with Mm -hmm. trying to understand why are you feeling insecure what is going on in your life that you want to go better and essentially why are you having those feelings and once you do that you you can trace it back to the source of like oh i'm feeling insecure because maybe I want to be doing that and I'm not doing it. And I feel like, you know, I feel that this is holding me back. So let me work on that specific thing and then let me see how I feel after that. Mm -hmm. And if you do, I guarantee you, you're going to be more confident, insecurities are going to go away and you start, you're going to start tearing those walls apart. It doesn't matter if you're a man or a woman, even as a woman to be in a relationship with a very successful man. I think the feelings are the same. And even if I'm very confident and very at a very good place with myself, there is always, at least I'm speaking from my experience, there, it's normal that I feel some insecurities here and there, like it just comes up. It's just, yeah, like you say, obviously it depends what we're going to do with those insecurities. Mm-hmm. Are we going to ruin our relationship because of it? Or we can address them in a conscious way. Clearly we have a choice, but I think it's just such a normal part of being human because if your partner is very successful, like they're, I'm sure one moment or another, you're going to have this little doubt, like, mm-hmm. oh my God, or you're going it, to, it can be very cute because you're scared to lose them. So you're like, oh, I don't know if I'm good enough for them. I don't know, maybe they're going to find someone more successful than I am. Like it can come from very, you know, nice place. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So one of the su- suggestions I would make here, what everyone can do is not to react on these emotions, but really start asking yourself, why? Mm-hmm. Why am I feeling this way? Then you'll get an answer. Then ask another why, another why, mm-hmm. until you get to the root of the reason. Exactly. You see, essentially, you, when you're with a successful person and you feel insecure, it comes from the place uh, because you you're you're comparing yourself to that person right you're starting to put you know two sides and you kind of like do a comparison between those two sides and that's that's where the flow begins in the first place mm-hmm. if you are standing up for yourself if you're doing the things you want to do in life if you have all your values straight if you are you know uh, you might not have the same aspirations as you know becoming a billionaire or like you know being uh, super business successful and whatnot but like you put down goals and you complete your goals and you achieve them, then you can feel successful in your own way. Not everybody is going to go after and take over the world, right? Some some people have higher ambitions, some people have lower ambitions, but like as long as you have something in this world that is worth waking up every day and do it, no matter big or small, doesn't matter how what big of an impact it has, I think that already can provide a sense of meaning in your life. And once you have that, you will never be asking those questions like, oh, am I good enough? Or am I, you know, should I be with that person and whatnot? No, because you already have the answer. Yes, you are good enough. Yes, you know, all those things that you want to do, all your goals are achieved. All like the things that you value in this life are in order. Mm. And there's nothing more into it. This should be highlighted. (laughs) Yeah, I think it's super important what you you just talked about. And I think it's, it's this the better we know ourselves the more comfortable and more confident we are in this world and it doesn't matter if my path is like being a meditation teacher or an artist or i don't know philanthropist or elon musk changing (laughs) life for all of us on this planet right but like as long as i'm following and staying true to myself like that's where where 
it becomes easier. I still b- believe that we're still human, we all of us to some extent. But uh, yeah, I think it, it makes it so much easier because I, I believe there's another aspect to it is like not only comparing us to our partner, but to other people. We might start thinking like, oh my God, maybe there's someone in this, I don't know, maybe in his, if I'm dating an artist, for example, let's say like, or maybe he's going to be interested in another artist at some mm-hmm. point. I'm like entrepreneur, like, I don't know, maybe, maybe, or, or I don't know, if I'm dating an entrepreneur, I'm like, yeah, I'm not that good enough. Maybe he's going to find someone who's like better than me. <laughs> like, I think it's part of being human. Yeah. Even, even if we are walking our own path, we, we know who we are. We're coming from our soul. I think there's still times. Mm-hmm. when we have those doubts yeah like we i totally agree with you mm-hmm. but you just can't let them get to you yeah yeah exactly you need to remind yourself to be in your center focus on you know you have your goals you go after mm-hmm. them and that's about it and if somebody's not happy with that thing it, it just so be it right true it, yeah it's, it's definitely going to be so much easier and you, i'm i'm sure if you're coming from that place knowing your truth and living your own values and goals you're not going to ruin a relationship with acting yeah. unconsciously exactly about it. yeah because you have a meaning right everybody's asking what's the meaning of life everybody mm-hmm. creates their own meaning mm-hmm. right it, it's so different from every one of them mm-hmm. if you have that then no need to ask more questions yeah true <laughs> You can never be taken away from your center that much. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah. exactly. Mm-hmm. Do we have another question? Uh, I think we're done uh, from the question of... Um, there is one though, it's the last one. Mm-hmm. What are your thoughts on women making the first move? Hmm. <laughs> it can be very interesting. So essentially, there's nothing wrong with, with a woman approaching a man. But then you have to consider the dynamics. It can be done with two different ways. A woman who is like very feminine and very like you know appealing and so on can, with her own way, attract the man, and she can do the first move. She can kind of like give the hints, like, hey, you know, I'm here and I want to talk to you, right? And she can do that very subtle. Or maybe a woman can be more you know masculine and more aggressive, and she can enter the conversation in a more dominant way. Mm-hmm. Then it all comes down to whatever you know, man you're dealing with, right? In the, in the first scenario, if the man is also feminine, maybe he doesn't really know what to do. He's going to be a little shy, like, oh, uh, like uh, this is the dynamics are not so well because you have like two feminine uh, characters attracting, trying to attract each other. It doesn't work. If the guy, if the guy has enough masculine energy on him, he's going to be like, all right, that, that's it. It makes so much sense. Let's have a conversation. Now, in the second scenario where the where the woman takes the more masculine role, if there's a masculine guy next to her, chances are he's not going to like it because now she's trying to take his role and the guy sees her as like, you're already competing with each other, so it doesn't work. But if the guy is more feminine, there's a very nice attraction into that because the woman is kind of like leading on the conversation is leading on the man and the man is going along with it because that's you know he's more feminine to his nature that's the, that's what he he was used to it and, and all that stuff so it can work out perfectly so it has to do with what kind of you know what kind of energies are those two parties playing with but uh, where do you fit in this example <laughs> what would you prefer uh personally i'm <laughs> I'm a fan of a, a really like really 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 feminine girls uh, women mm. I'm I believe it's very attractive to me like this whole uh, when a woman is is okay with your body with your like the way she expresses herself the way she she like projects her energy outside to the world and all that stuff I think it's very attractive and you can tell like women who are who are who have those you know characteristics uh, I'm personally very attracted to that. However, it doesn't mean that you know. It doesn't mean that we always we are all we always have to be masculine or we always have to be feminine. Like mm-hmm. those balances are shifting depending on the environment that you are and depending on the 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 context of your relationship and who you're talking to and all that stuff. Like both men and women could be both masculine and feminine on different days, months, years, whatever, mm-hmm. and it's okay. Mm-hmm. 
Beautifully said. I'm like so impressed because <laughs> like, yeah, you two know each other for a bit longer. Clearly we, we've been seeing each other in the yes. university and we, we know each other, but I had no idea that you have this deep, <laughs> deep uh, knowledge and conscious uh, approach to life in you. Like it's, it's been super interesting. I could stay here all night talking. <laughs> yeah. Happy to share. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank, Thank you. you a lot, Vasilis. Thank you for inviting me. It was a great pleasure.